morning, everyone. I'm Lori Bend, board chair for the Arts Council for Monterey County, and I want to welcome you, all of you, to our quarterly Business Works workshop, where we provide solutions for the busy creative. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome the director of marketing with Art Storefronts, Patrick Shanahan. Art Storefronts is a hugely successful platform that gives artists everything they need to start, run, and grow a successful art business. And Patrick is going to tell us more about it. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrick. Yeah, my pleasure. For those of you joining us in the webinar, please use the chat for your questions, and we will answer them throughout and in a dedicated Q&A session at the end. For those of you joining us live on Facebook, please put your questions in the comments and we'll try to answer them all. Without further ado, here's Patrick Shanahan to tell us about the art business pyramid and the path to building a successful art business in 2021 and beyond. Welcome, Patrick. Thanks, Lori. Happy to be here. Thanks, Aaron, too. Um, quick intro on me. So I've been digital marketer entrepreneur going on like 20 years i've been in the art industry for going on 10 plus um seven plus with art storefronts and again it's a business that helps artists and photographers with pretty much everything they need to start running grow a successful art business and been in this industry a long time talk to a ton of artists and photographers do that on a regular basis i'm going to run three webinars weekly for like a year and a half and you know you do that for long enough and pattern recognition becomes a thing right in addition to that, we have a little bit over 5,200 uh, customers on our platform, and we study the successful ones quite closely. Um, you know, who are the artists, who are the photographers that are selling the most originals, the cheapest originals, the highest priced originals? Um, who are the ones that are selling the most prints, canvas prints, metal prints, acrylic prints, merch? Uh, how many sales are they running a year? What traffic sources are working? And you put all that together in combination, and it, and it sort of gives me sort of a some unique insights, let's say, on to how you best monetize your creative talent, uh, how you best build a business that is successful and has continues to grow year over year, uh, which in this industry is not easy to do. So uh, have sort of an agenda for the presentation today. Um, as Lori made mention, I've got this thing that I've created called sort of the art business or the art selling pyramid. And it's like a, it's a set of premises. Uh, for how I believe you need to think about this industry if you want to make it, some things that you need to take into account, some um, the business model, and and how to approach a bunch of different things. And so we'll roll through the presentation um, and some quick you know sort of programming notes. I'm going to throw links and videos and PDFs and all sorts of things at you as I'm rolling along. Um, the, the idea is, is it will email you all of these things after the fact, so you can kind of peruse them on your own time. You don't have to worry about, you know, clicking on links now or taking notes on them or whatever. I'll send you, I'll send you everything and, and I'm sure they'll send you a replay of the video too. So if you want to go through it that way. And then after that's done, uh, we can get into Q&A and love to talk about just about anything. Um, it can be about anything, obviously, that we do at Art Storefronts. It can be anything um, where you are in your business. And, you know, again, I don't even think it's hyperbole to say this. I'm not aware of another human being alive that talks to more artists, more photographers on a week in, week out basis via video. I've heard it all. I've seen it all. Niche selection, pricing, how to navigate a gallery relationship. Should you be boosting posts on Facebook? Um, price points, marketing of all stripes and kinds, um, anything. So we, we can get into all of it. Uh, I'd love to answer your questions. Love to give you guys as much help as possible. So without further ado, uh, we can get right into... Uh, my art selling pyramid. Okay. And I really do believe that this is the path to a successful art business in 2021 and beyond. Okay. And I stole it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I, if you haven't seen this thing in a while, the concept is it's a pyramid and we have to sort the bottom blocks before we sort the next blocks. Right. So in Maslow's case, the bottom block of the pyramid is the physiological needs, right? We all need to eat. We all need to sleep. We all need to do that daily. It is a quotidian need. We get that taken care of. Uh, we can apparently get a house with a lock on the door and start making money and lifting weights on and on and on. So we start out with the art selling pyramid. And, and, you know, I should say before I even get into this, like, I'm assuming that there's, you know, despite the fact that most of you guys are California based on California based too, you know, there's likely a diverse group that's watching this and watching this after the fact, right? And you've got people in different niches and you have different, different ages and you have different levels of skill, different, different nuances uh, to your particular business, right? And 
you know, I can say conclusively without having to talk to a single solitary one of you, because I've been doing this for so long, there's only one thing that all of you have in common. Every single solitary one of you has a marketing problem. You need more eyeballs on your art, your photography, your creations, if you want to sell more of them. You all have a marketing problem, and that is just fundamentally important to understand. And so the bottom of the art selling pyramid, the bottom block is attention, okay? Attention is the currency of the land. It is a daily need, okay? If you are not waking up every single solitary day and every week saying, what am I doing to get more attention, more eyeballs to my art or my photography, you are working on the wrong things, okay? It is the currency of the land. It comes in two forms. Attention is both rented and owned. The rented attention is Instagram fans and Facebook followers. I'm going to mess that up. YouTube subscribers, wherever you're doing your marketing, the, 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 social, the socials, and it's rented because it can be taken away from you at any time. The owned attention is what can't be taken away from you. And that's email addresses and it's snail mail addresses and it's, tech, it's phone numbers to anyone doing text message marketing. And it's the currency of the land. With attention, you can do absolutely anything. Without it, you're not in the game. And I say sort of a controversial thing, perhaps less so in California, but if I asked you, who are some of the most powerful women in the world? How would you respond to that? It's an interesting question, right? You know, I answer it. It's the Kardashian Jenner sisters. Okay. Now we can all argue about how these ladies went about acquiring said attention. What we can't argue about are the results that they've been able to achieve as a result of it. The private planes, the bajillion dollar businesses, one of them just started a tequila brand. I would bring that up to say, okay, if any of those surgically enhanced well-endowed women decided to start painting tomorrow, or decided to start taking photos tomorrow and wanted to have an art business, it would likely be a $5 million art business year one. Is that fair? Perhaps not, but it underscores how important attention is, okay? It is the currency of the land that we live in. You need to be working on it on a regular basis. And yes, I know, okay? Creative, the last thing you guys all wanna do is work on your marketing. No one ever works on it. No one ever works on it consistently, and it is the highest ROI area of focus you could possibly have in your business. We'll get more into it later. We're working on our attention daily. The next part of the pyramid has an outer block and an inner block, okay? Number one is the business model. I believe if you want to make it and you want to be successful in this business, you have to be selling direct, okay? There can be no one in between you and the end consumer. Okay, and this is important. This is fundamentally important because if you do not know who is purchasing your work, you do not have the ability to market to these people for the rest of your art selling lives, okay? And number two is if you don't know who these people are, you can't build a collector list. Now, I originally got this notion of the collector list from this book. And I think it's a fantastic book. And to be honest with you, I think you should all buy it. Okay. It's by Wyland. I'll send you a link later. You can't buy it on Amazon, which is sort of annoying, but Wyland, the whale guy, most people would say he's a best-selling artist in the United States. It's not even close. And this thing's really thin. There it is. It's really thin. It's a good read. Um, Wyland defines a collector as people that will purchase in upwards of eight plus pieces from him over the course of a lifetime. And he sort of goes into in the book some of the tactical things that he does for these folks, right? He treats these people like they're staying at the Four Seasons. It's an easy way to think about it. He's sending them private, uh, personalized uh, uh, Christmas cards, right? He's sending them personalized emails from time to time. He's liking their posts on Instagram and Facebook. And, he, and, he, and he's taking care of these people, no joke, like they're staying at the Four Seasons. And early on in my career, you know, maybe five years ago, or whenever when I read this, I was like, that's really interesting. Since then, you know, years in the trenches working with our customers, I've seen it play out again and again and again and again. And it is one of the most profound things any art or photography business can have full stop. And let's use a, a numbers example to keep the math simple. You come out with a new series. There's 10 pieces in the series. You're going to release it to everyone on a Wednesday. Okay. On Sunday, you email your collector list and you say, Hey, collectors, hey, patrons, as a way of saying thanks for your continued support uh, and patronage to my art endeavors, I, I just wanted to let you know I'm coming out with a brand new series. Um, because you guys have supported me in the past, I wanted to show it to you before anyone else could see it, right? And what ends up happening is some small portion of your, sh of your entire series at first gets purchased by your collectors. Maybe it starts just one out of 10. And then you take nine pieces to public, you sold 10% before it even hits the market. And it just goes up and up and up. And in certain series with my customers, I've seen it 50, 60, 70%.
okay, of the works are sold before the public even gets a chance to see it. And that's because these folks understood the value of a collector list and they've taken care of the collector list. And I would go as far to say that the size and the health of the collector list is either the number one or number two most reflective uh, metric of your particular business that will map to revenue. What size is the collector list? How well is it taken care of? And, and, and further, like, you know, fundamentally at a core, most artists, most photographers, you guys are solopreneurs. You know, you're, you're, you're pretty much alone in your endeavor. You are all really essentially just commissioned salespeople. You create the works and then you go out and sell the works. If you sell the works, you get paid. If you don't sell the works, they're not going to sell themselves. You are a commissioned salesperson, essentially. Okay. Well, when you get a collector list, you go from being a commissioned salesperson to being a commissioned salesperson with a base salary. You're getting paid 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, $80,000. It starts small. It goes up from there just for creating and taking care of a collector list. It is why it is so fundamentally important to do so. And if you don't get the business model right, um, you're not going to know. And like, look, I know there are a ton of people on this call that have, that have had storied careers selling through galleries and it's been wonderful and you've enjoyed every minute of it. You just got to create and they sold it for you. But guess what? You don't have any damn idea who's been buying your art. You have absolutely zero ability to market to these people and you don't have a collector list. Who are they? You don't know. Why do you think the gallery is not telling you who it is? Because it's the single solitary, most valuable currency above attention in this business, full stop. The inner block. Okay. There are three ways to sell art and photography. I believe every artist, every photographer that wants to make it in today's day and age needs to understand the three and then needs to be prepared to deploy the three when the situation calls for it. Okay. What's the best way? It's a trick question. We all know the best way to sell art. It's in person, face to face. It always has been. It always will be. The problem with the best way is you, like me, are geographically fixed on this planet. Okay. Uh, you, like me, have to sleep. And you, like me, uh, can't have 15 conversations at once. So the next way, okay, the next best way is on your website. And you need to have a website, and the art needs to be on your website. It solves for all these problems when people are not in your geographic town. It solves for these problems when you're asleep. It solves for these problems when 21, 20 people want to look at it all at once. So that's really, really important. The newest way, though, is the most exciting thing that's happened in this industry in forever. I've never seen anything even close to it. And it's exactly what we're doing right now. It's the aligned video. And this can happen in either a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many fashion, right? And let's say, I'm gonna grab an attendee name. Let's say I follow Deborah here on Instagram. And this is the one-to-one. -one. And I'm thumbing through my phone at night and I see an Instagram post from Deborah, and I'm like, whoa, that piece is beautiful. And it turns out I'm remodeling my bathroom right now. And my wife is on the couch with me. And I, I go, honey, look at this piece from Deborah. This thing's amazing. We got to talk to her about this. This might be great for the bathroom. And so I send Deborah uh, an Instagram direct message. And I'm like, Deborah, my wife and I are remodeling a bathroom. That piece you have is really, really interesting. I was wondering if we could talk about it. And Deborah goes, Patrick, no problem. Let's schedule a Zoom session or insert whatever, FaceTime, Teams, Google Meet, uh, Hangout, any of them. Let's get into a Zoom call. Next thing you know, Deborah and my wife and I, the two decision makers are in a Zoom call and she's holding up her pieces. And as she's explaining her inspiration and she's talking about the various different sizes and media types that they're available on, we get into pricing. Next thing you know, her dog comes running in on the call and I'm like, wait a minute, you have a dog? I have a dog. We're starting to bond. We're both dog people. And very, very quickly, Deborah has been able to leverage the power of live video, okay, to, to get the sale over the line. And it is the next best thing to being in person. And ask how many of you guys are doing this on a regular basis, jumping into Zoom calls with potential customers to, to sell. You know, and as you, as you, it's a rhetorical question, I know almost none of you are doing it. But when you stretch it out to its logical conclusion, what if when I came to your website, right? Instead of just being able to buy a piece, I could just automatically, I just went away, of course. I could automatically just book an appointment. You could set on your calendar ahead of time, hey, here's the time uh, that I'm available on a calendar. Uh, go ahead and pick a time slot that works for you, and you're automatically scheduled and confirmed, and we can talk about it, okay? Extremely powerful leveraging live video in this capacity. Extremely. How many of you guys are doing this on a regular basis? Almost no one is, okay? That's the one-to-one. -one. That doesn't even get me anywhere near as fired up as the one-to-many, okay? And... This is a buddy of mine, Matthew Locke. Actually, as I dumped this, his, this is one of his works behind me. And 
painter in Canada, in Laval. Um, and during the course of a long time customer, so we've run a bunch of like marketing initiatives, initiatives with them. But during the course of the pandemic, we came up with this thing called a live art show, like a, not like a live, like we came up with it. We called this thing the basement sale, right? And it was a bunch of real old works that this guy had in his basement, okay, that had been sitting there for 10 years. It's not anywhere near representative of the stuff that he does now. And this particular painter over a 15 day period in the middle of the pandemic, there were two live art shows. Oh, they're showing ads in this. That is so annoying. Let me see if I can get one without the ads. Um, over a two day period, he sold 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian. And he did it right from his garage studio where he paints. And this is, this is an, an artist that for years and years and years was doing the full dog and pony show, meaning paint for nine months, you know, this was, this was like his last big gallery one. That was the, the leading image from it. But this is a guy that would paint for nine months, you know, put it all into the gallery. Um, huge opening night, the velvet ropes, the bartenders, performance art in there, the entire thing. And in this particular instance, 15 days over the, over the peak of the pandemic, okay, he sold 60 pieces for 30,000 Canadian. And he's sitting there looking at that going, there's no 50-50 split there. I got to keep all the information on my collectors. And I didn't have to leave my house. Now, granted, there's some things that we figured out in terms of technology. He streaming this live to Instagram. He's streaming it live to Facebook. Uh, people can leave comments. Anyway, it was a complete eye opener and, and, and complete game changer. And since then, we've sort of become the subject matter experts on live art shows. And there's a reason I've never seen any marketing technique or tactic that is this effective at moving art. It's not even close. Okay. It's not even close. And there's some reasons for that, that we can get into it. And, you know, lest you think that, you know, it's us art storefronts or our customers or some other people figuring it out, the whole entire art world right now is trying to figure out how best to leverage live video in the one-to-one -one or one-to-many fashion. Now, your industry is not one that has a ton of reports. Uh, this one I like, it's called the Art Market Report and it's put out by Art Basel and UBS Global. And I think they just updated it with like a mid-year one. But anyway, I'm gonna send you links on all this. I think you should read it as a disclaimer these guys only survey the top 1% of artists, meaning artists that are well above six figures up to a millions, up to millions, I should say. But, you know, in, in this report, and they, you know, they, they do a little like PDF that they'll give you, or they give you this fancy web page with like the moving graphics and everything else. But let me just quote from chapter five, which they call online sales. And I quote, chapter five looks at the online art market in the rapid evolution of sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 in the development of online viewing rooms, OVRs. And it goes on to talk about just how much art was moved over the course of the pandemic and OVRs. OVRs, come to find out, is the new snooty term for a Zoom call. OVRs, give me a break. It is a Zoom call, okay, with the potential high net worth individual on one side, and on the other side is either the artist's agent, the gallery owner, um, or even sometimes the artist itself. And it, and it goes on to talk about how much art was moved throughout the course of the pandemic on these OVRs. And by the way, that's going to be the new buzzword. I've seen, it, I've seen it like 50 times now. OVRs, online viewing rooms. Snooty word for a Zoom call as far as I'm concerned. But when you, when you start contemplating, okay, that the whole entire world is trying to figure out this new way of selling you really have to change your thinking. It's not about just having a live art show in your garage studio. Now, also with Matthew, I wanna show you this example, okay? He had in the middle of the pandemic, so this was, what is the date on this? July 24th, okay? And, and this is, Canada was still on lockdown, but he had a show, the gallery owner was like, you know what? You've got this show planned, you can have it. Everyone's gonna have to wear masks, social distancing, no one in Canada could travel. So attendance wasn't that great, right? So what did we do? We ran a live art show the very next day after the regular show and walked people through the gallery. And it was like the next best thing. It was like you were there. I mean, for all the people that couldn't attend, you walked in and he showed you the show and you got to see the pieces and you got to see which ones had the red dots and were sold already. Okay. And you honestly feel like you're in the show. People are leaving comments and questions. The artist is talking about his, his inspiration and what he did and you know what went down in this particular one. And as a result of this particular show, he ended up selling a bunch of extra works that did not sell on the gallery opening day. Now, again, he, was, he still had to do the 50-50 split with the gallery, but it is what it is. Um, so 
The point is, is it doesn't matter if you're doing this on the low end of the scale or the high end of the scale, anyone can do this. And now, by the way, I want to show this one because this one's really interesting and proves an earlier point. Uh, Meg Painter, Kansas City, okay? Been a longtime customer, a longtime friend. She was physically moving. When was this show? This show was June 3rd um, of, of this year. She was physically moving from her like one studio space, she's in Kansas City, to another studio space, okay? And, you know, she had a bunch of stuff color studies and sketches and smaller things, right? Um, and she ran a basement sale. And on Sunday, she let her collectors know she was having a basement sale. There was 86 pieces in the show. She sold 46% of the show to her collector list before the thing even started, which was amazing. Um, I think she did a little bit over $13,000 in this show. Since then, we've run show after show after show with every type of artist and every type of niche, photographers, um, different locations, different, different ages, different styles, uh, people wearing white gloves and not wearing white gloves. I mean, show after show after show. And, and, and as you look at these, and we can certainly get more into this if, in the Q&A if it's like a topic of interest. What do you notice about these people? They all look like regular people, just like you and I. They all seem to have regular houses, just like you and I. I don't know why it's, it's so long the load. Some of them have weird air pods, <laughs> like Randy here, right? And, you know, I have never seen, I, again, I've been doing this for a long time. I have never seen um, anything this rep, this effective at selling art and photography. And, and again, we can get into the reasons why, but we just run show after show after show after show. And some of the results have been absolutely staggering. I mean, there's one in here and I'm going to bring her up because I'm going to send her, I'm going to send you guys the link to her show after the fact. So her name's Carol Parker and she lives in Northern Colorado and she has a very interesting niche in the sense that she photographs wild horses, okay? And we still have wild horses in the Western United States and it's on BLM land, Bureau of Land Management. So it's federal land. And the ranchers and the farmers are not happy about this horse situation. And so they're attempting to cull the horses. And so this, this is a really hot button topic. I bring a lot up to say it's a hot button topic. So we've run three of these shows with Carol. And let me just get to, oh, oh it's right here. I wanna show you these results. Her first show. She did 1,800 in revenue, six pieces sold, 303 average order value. Very early on um, in, in the process, this, was, this would have been March 24th this year. Her second show is on June 21st, sold 49 pieces for $6,688. This was a show she ran two weeks ago, so on 10-7. She did 27,000, 119 pieces sold, $228 average order value. And I think I've got this show here. This is the one that I'm going to send you. You have to see how good of a job she did merchandising the pieces in the back, right? And what I'm showing you here is a new art storefronts feature. I'm not trying to put a sales pitch on, but what I love about this is that the show runs. While the show's running, people have this page with all of your various pieces below it, right? So this one's number 27. And I can be on this page. Let's say I'm watching the video after the fact and go, ooh, that number 27, I really like it. I can scroll right down here to number 27 and it's sold. So I can't buy that one. But anyway, I'm going to send you this video after the fact, and I really want you to watch how she does story about how she talks about the pieces and she talks about the media types and the nuances of what she really, really loves about them. It's absolutely amazing. And I've never seen anything like it in my entire life that's this effective. And again, we can maybe get into that in the Q&A. But let's get back to the pyramid. So that's the three ways to sell art. On the last top triangle, it's everything else. It's everything else that you guys are doing. If you have other revenue sources that are working in your business, fantastic. I've never met a revenue source I don't like as long as it's legal. So stay at that. You have, you have gallery relationships that are working, fantastic. But it's in addition to working on attention, the business model, the collector list, the three ways to sell art. Uh, you're doing the show in Thayer Circuit, wonderful. Love the show in Thayer Circuit. It's in addition to everything else that's on the pyramid. Um, so too, if you've got online galleries, Redbubble, Saatchi, Fine Art America, um, Etsy, eBay, whatever, whatever it is, it's in addition to everything else. You get this pyramid right, and then we mix in a little P, the perspective, and you stand the single solitary greatest chance to make it in this business, to have a business that is growing year after year. And, you know, I talk to so many artists and photographers on a weekly basis. I, I've made mention of this, right? a year and a half, three sessions a day, including the sessions with my customers. And you do that and it's an eye opener. It's just an eye opener. And, and, and what you realize about this particular uh, uh, field you're in, this creative endeavor that you're in, 
I routinely talk to people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and sometimes even people in their 90s come on the Zoom calls and they're asking how they can grow their business. And I look at that and I'm like, whoa, that's just, that's astounding. I mean, creatives of your stripe do not go through midlife crises where all of a sudden they want to quit everything that they're doing and go start a jet ski rental business in Florida. You're going to be creating for the rest of your life. The vast majority, you have several decades, if not decades, if not a decade left to get this pyramid right, okay? In the minute that you get this pyramid right, and I know most of you haven't, I know none of you have been working on your marketing consistently ever. I know most of you have not been retaining the information on who's purchasing your work. And if you have, you've not been marketing to them, it's okay. Have the perspective of how long you have to get this right. You get this right, you stand a fantastic chance, okay? A fantastic chance at your business growing year after year. You stand a fantastic chance when the next God forbid pandemic, whatever comes and rips the rug right out from all of you and, and takes away all your revenue sources. It's not gonna affect you in the slightest because you have a collector list. You have people to market to. You're working on your marketing consistently. You're not incumbent or reliant upon any retail business. It doesn't matter if you can only sell from your home. So I get really fired up about the perspective piece. So many people, you know, don't take that bit into account and it's the whole ball game. You've got time to get this right, but I don't know how you make it in today's day and age. If you don't get that right, I really don't. And I also believe that this industry, your industry is going through its blockbuster Netflix moment. Okay. It is going through its taxi cab Uber moment, meaning the old and established norm, the paradigm, if you like, if trying to get into a gallery, then selling through a gallery and not knowing who your buyers are and getting a 50% commission and having that work is just getting obliterated. And I'm sure there's probably some gallery owners on there. I ruffle feathers with this a little bit. I believe that the artist gallery relationship is like being a tenant farmer. Okay. You might get a roof over your head. You might get a couple of meals, but when that relationship's over, you leave with your shirt on your back and nothing else. Okay. It's exploitative at the end of the day. And quite frankly, the balance of power, given what we have now available with the internet and technology and marketing, it's shifted. You don't need them. You cannot, you don't need to be dictated to about whether or not you can sell directly from your website. You have to be selling directly from your website. So that's my presentation. That's my rant. Uh, I'm sticking to it. I think at this point, we can open things up to Q&A. And I see we have some attendees on here. I don't know if they have the ability to do the raise hand function. I think they do, which is like at the bottom of your Zoom window here. Is it going to pull up? Let's see. Why is it not pulling up? That's really interesting. It's not pulling up for me. Anyway, I, I can't do that because there's, there's a different setup. But there's a raise hand feature. And then I would love to uh, answer any and all questions you have. And... Um, I see Sarah's got her hand up already. So Sarah, we'll start with you. But if you want to throw questions in the chat, we can answer those too. Um, I don't know if it's going to let you guys turn your cameras on or not, but don't feel like you need to turn your camera on if you don't want to turn your camera on. I totally hate being on video personally. I get it if you don't want to, uh, but you certainly can. Um, and then, yeah, whether it's chat or, or um, here in the Zoom, love to answer any and all questions you have. And it can be it can be about anything, you guys, honestly. It can be about anything that we do at our storefronts, of course, but it can also be, what are you struggling with? What's the biggest issue that you think that you have um, that's holding you back, right? Um, that's, that's preventing you from taking the next step in your career and, and love, to, love to talk to you about it. So Sarah, why don't we start with you? Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me, Patrick? I sure can. Hi. Hey, thank you so much. This is the second time I've seen you. And um, right. I've, I've been busy running around doing shows in the summertime. <laughs> so, you know, a little, a, another um, venue rather than the galleries. I do really well at the shows. I've got a gold mine um, decades of clients um, mail list that I have not put together and really gone into the online. It's been more kind of hit and run doing all the shows person to person. No, but Sarah, that's okay. You had me at you kept all the information. Okay. Yeah, you're, yeah. Way, you're way better off than most. <laughs> well, I've been meaning to get it, compile the mail list. I mean, it's, it's just been taking forever, you know, MailChimp or constant contact, like getting held up on these stupid little, you know, mm -hmm. little uh, elements. But um, a lot of your stuff that seems to be geared towards uh, fine art, painting, photography, and I'm a jewelry designer. I'm uh, playing around with, I love photography and painting, and I'd love to build into that later. Mm -hmm. And if I can actually transfer my business from more in-person doing shows onto this kind of format to mm -hmm. 
raise my income, give, create more time so that I can do more creations and, and continue the artist path here uh, mm -hmm. in more lucrative style. So do you, how can this uh, work for jewelry designers? Do you ever get jewelry designers using your art storefronts? Um, yeah, I mean, like the, at the end of the day, you know, our platform is built to sell wall art, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. from the ground up design that way, but it's also just an e-commerce shopping cart. So you can totally, you can totally use it. And, and really, you know, because people are selling classes and they're selling merch and they're selling all these other items, you can sell anything on it. So you could certainly sell jewelry, you, you know, you're just not gonna show the jewelry on a wall, right? But right. independent of that, I mean, your biggest problem is the same as everyone else's. Like everyone's got the marketing problem, right? Like that's the only thing that we need to solve. But one thing, one thing that I would like to talk to you about just, just out of curiosity and it leverages some of the stuff that, that, that came out of my talk is I love the show in Thera Circuit, okay? There is no better lead generation opportunity out there than the show in Thera Circuit. The question is, is are you properly taking advantage of it, right? And, you know, you talk to anyone that's been doing the show in Thera Circuit for any portion of time and everyone will tell you the same thing. We even have some customers that have like, you know, there's like a syndicate of people that do all the big ones in the US, right? And they all know each other. They all hang out. They're all friends. And yeah. they'll all tell you the same thing. And I mean, you'll probably echo it as like, it's hit or miss. Sometimes yep. it's great, right? Sometimes you don't even get your booth feedback. And that whole thing infuriates me, right? And so one of the things that I love, I love doing as a, as a, as a marketer is developing concepts to get the highest ROI out of a show, right? And so many people miss on this. I can't even begin to tell you, right? Like, you know, the, the number two guy in my marketing team, we've been friends forever. He lives in Chicago and they just had their giant show. I forget what it's, it's like they shut down like five streets, some ridiculousness. If anyone lives in Chicago, they would maybe know. And I asked him to go through and, you know, he, he sees 60, 70, 80 different booths. And I'm like, how many, how many are following the playbook? He's like, almost none of them. So step one, you get the whole show set up. Great, fine. Step two, you need to have some sort of a giveaway and you need to have, whether it's a fishbowl to collect business cards or whether it's a clipboard that they can enter to win their email address or whether it is, you know, if you're going to get fancy an iPad, right? And they can enter their email right there. At the end of the show, um, you, let, you're, you let them know that you're going to uh, declare a winner and have the item on display. You have to get creative. Obviously, you're not going to give away a thousand piece of, thousand dollar piece of jewelry. Maybe you have some cheaper price point items. I don't know. But the point is, you paid all that money for that booth. As soon as you start talking to somebody, you can't talk to two people at once. And so these people that are walking by, they need to see that there's something that they can enter in to, to, to give up the email address, okay? Then the show ends, you email everyone that was in the show and you say, hey guys, here's the winner. And I never win, I'm like you guys, I never win anything. So for everyone that didn't win, I just wanna let you know that you can take 15% store-wide for the next 48 hours, okay? That's number one. Number two, and, and you would be surprised how often you are not break even. And by running that, you are break even at the end of it. Or, or because we play the long game, Sarah, because we go back to perspective, uh, the emails that you get, okay? You might, not, you might not get a big sale out of those emails for three years, but because you're playing the long game, because you're marketing consistently, because you're constantly building leads for your business, three years from now, one of those people might buy $27,000 for the jewelry from you. And guess what? You just covered your booth fee and then some, right? That's number mm -hmm. one. Number two, there is no better place to run a live art show than when you've set up this beautiful booth, okay? So, hey guys, I'm in Carmel this weekend for the such and such there. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys my booth, okay? Show you all the items I have on for sale. The show is not officially open yet, but I'm giving you guys a window into my booth, into my setup, everything else. If you wanna come down, come see me. If not, because you guys are loyal followers, uh, anything here is 10% off, you know, send me an Instagram DM or whatever. So there you go. There's two things that you can bolt into your show routine immediately that will drastically improve the ROI of every show that you go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing shows a long time and I love that person to person contact. And for again, sure, I have so many customers that have been asking me for a show and I've been held up by the whole, my lack of technological you know, skill. It's just taking mm -hmm. forever and trying to reinvent the wheel. And so uh, it would be nice to have, if working with you guys, does that save me all the... Um, thing with Facebook and all of that, the Facebook marketplace and all that kind of stuff. I find my Facebook business page just does not work right. I, or it's more operator error. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick. yeah, yeah. It's a hassle and I need to be making stuff instead of getting through that. So, you know. For sure, for sure. I yeah, I, 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 would say, I would say, and this part's important, like I believe very, very strongly in the business model and the opportunity and selling direct and having to have the website and do all this tech piece. Okay. It, it, it's the future full stop. If you want, if you do that, 
and you've already sold art, you've already determined that you have a, a product the market wants, you just have a marketing problem that you need to solve. And it needs to be solved no matter what. And I know you guys are all solopreneurs and I know you're all, for the most part, pardon my French, Luddites, right? You hate technology. You don't want to get anywhere near it. It gives you frustrations. It makes you pull your hair out of your head. And so do you ever get past that? No. First couple of years suck. They suck. It's a pain in the butt. You have to learn how to capture emails. You have to learn how to email those emails. You have to learn what we call omni-channel marketing, the email message dovetails with the Facebook message, dovetails with the Instagram message. You have to learn how to run these live art shows. You have to learn how to execute a proper sale. How do you tease a sale? How do you announce a sale? How do you contemplate discounts, the scarcity? How long do you run it? Uh, what do you do during? What do you do after? All of it is mega frustrating. It's, it's pulling your hair out of your head for a year or two. But once you get past it and once you start doing it consistently, the business is really growing and growing and growing. And even through you, like you did 50 live shows last or 50, you know, in-person shows. Like if we started leveraging your list, we got your list up, we started warming your list up. We let your list know that you have an online presence. Uh, we let you, your list know that you're having a live art show. You could pop one live art show that would do better than three or four of those in-person shows that you just did. You didn't leave your house. You didn't pay booth fees. You didn't load up the car. You didn't stay in a crappy hotel and eat crappy food and probably not get good <laughs> exercise. You know, and it's like, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong in person. The, 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 the person to person is awesome, but yeah, know, no, no. Yeah. 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 Every so, day I don't, every day I'm not, I don't have it up online. I am losing lots of money because I have tons of people asking me for it. Yeah. So especially now with the holidays coming up. So, well, what yeah. would the next step be for me to um, connect with you guys? And, and what are, what are some options of having you help shift me online? Yeah. So wh what we do, I hate the word, but we have like, we do the demo process. It's basically somebody from our outreach team takes you on like a, an hour zoom call that shows you all the software, all the bells, all the whistles, all the pricing, all of this, all of that. It's the best way to see whether or not, you know, you think it's a good fit and they'll explain all the marketing support and everything else that you get. So I would just go to, to, to art storefronts and request a demo. And then, um, if you, if you do end up signing up, I was talking to uh, Aaron earlier, I'll probably do some sort of special for arts for MC, um, members. So I'll, I'll okay. figure out what that is. So mention that on the phone. If you talk to him. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love your, your, you're just so on it. And I love it. I love watching all your casts, your podcast here. So thank well, you. I, I really appreciate that. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, who's next? And thanks for re re being brave, Sarah, with the first question. Um, I can only really harass the names that I'm seeing here in the attendees list, but don't worry, I will. So Barbara, Deborah, Hayward Arts. Isa, Jake, JC, questions, any, all? I mean, I'm happy to, to continue ranting, but love to, love to answer any questions you guys have here and happy to do so. I know it can be a little intimidating sometimes, but what are you guys struggling with? What's at issue? What is preventing you from taking the next steps in your business? Was your business humming along and then COVID came and wiped out your revenue sources and you're wondering what to do next? Are the galleries working through you? Are they attempting to up their commission percentage? Because we hear a lot of that out there right now too, um, which is a little bit crazy. Yeah, that's a great question. So Aaron, Aaron's asking me, and I appreciate the question, Aaron. Um, how do we best leverage the holidays in Q4? And so let's at least first talk about Q4 broadly, okay? And then we can get into it specifically. When I was a kid, and I'm 42 years old now, uh, we used to live in a civilized world, okay? We would all visit with Thanksgiving for our families, have a great time. There would be this thing called Black Friday the next day. Everyone that was crazy about shopping would go out and get these amazing deals. The weekend would end. If you're me, you would procrastinate to the last minute, do your Christmas shopping. Holidays are done and dusted. It's New Year's. Then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, someone invented a holiday on Monday, called it Cyber Monday at a, thing, at a whole cloth, just invented a holiday. A holiday now it turns out is one of the second or third biggest uh, uh, all year long in terms of total e-commerce revenue value. Then the following year or the year after, someone was like, hey, you know what we're going to do? Instead of just running our sale on Black Friday, we're going to move it up two weeks because that's going to allow us to, to get first crack at all these available dollars before anyone else. And year after that, more and more businesses followed suit. Now, October starts. And it's almost like just full on blitz all the way to the end of the year. And, you know, Q4 is essentially, by the way, just the last three months, October, November, December. 
big in November was obviously Black Friday, Cyber Monday, then the rush to Christmas. Now it has just become one giant buying frenzy, right? And, you know, the, the analogy that I always use is that it's sort of like that movie Jaws, you know, Jaws, the first one where like the detective is on the back of the boat, scooping the blood and guts in the water to try and bring the shark up. That's every single solitary merchant, uh, Macy's, Best Buy, Amazon, whoever, they are all spending so much money on advertising at the end of the year that subconsciously, unless you're living under a rock, I mean, we are bombarded everywhere we go, right? On TV, on our cell phones, on the radio, on billboards on the side of the road, everywhere. You can't escape it. And subconsciously, it whiffs us all up into a buying frenzy. It, it just gets all of us to get our trigger finger on those credit cards and be a little bit more ready to spend, right? And so the takeaway from Q4 is there is no better time as an artist or a photographer to be actively selling your artwork, okay? And what do most artists and photographers do? Absolutely nothing. They don't do any pre-marketing and they don't have a sale. The barrier for entry here is so low, folks, I can't even begin to tell you. Start doing some marketing, let people know you exi exist, and let's use Sarah as an example. Sarah, get that damn list into MailChimp or whatever, warm them up with an email. Hey guys, Sarah, haven't heard from you in years, just wanted to let you know that Black Friday and Cyber Monday are coming up and I'm thinking about having a sale. I'll send you a notice in a couple of weeks. Then have a sale. Just that alone is tremendous. If I take all of the combined customers, and again, we've been doing this for a while now at Art Storefronts. So if I take, let's just say the entire combined artists and photographers that we have selling online, and let's just say to keep the math simple that their average monthly sales for the months of June, July, and August is $100,000 a month, all of them combined, right? What we normally see in October is it, 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 it doubles. So it goes from 100,000 a month to 200,000 a month. In November, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it goes from 100,000 a month to 300,000 a month. In December, month, in December, it falls back down to a 1.5 multiple. So it goes from 100,000 to 150,000. That is how much art is sold in that particular last three month period of the year. And you got to get in the water. You got to get something in the water. And, you know, for those of you that, have, that are just getting started, run your first live art show. Okay. Fail miserably. It doesn't matter. You all have one of these. Turn it on. Go to the social network. You have the most people on. And be like, guys, I've never done this before. I'm running a live art show. This thing is something I would normally sell for such and such. The inspiration was on my honeymoon. I got this incredible photo, right? Like, run one, get on one. And I'll actually send you guys after this is over. I'll send you like a, a quick start guide on how to run live art shows. Put one together. It's pretty cool. Did I have it up? I don't know. Maybe you didn't have it up. Do, 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 I don't know. Yes, I do. Let me, let me just show you this. I want, I want you guys to check this out. I literally have, I have to go full here, get myself out. So I have an intro on this. I have why live art shows of the future. Um, I'll even put this in the Zoom chat right now, but I'll, I'll send it to you after the fact. Real results from real artists. You can see their shows. Uh, you can see what people had to say about it after the fact. Um, and then there's a step-by-step -step guide. You have to email opt-in to get it, but whatever, just email opt-in. Um, and, and it'll walk you through step-by-step -step absolutely everything that you need to do um, to get that done. So if you've never run one, run one. But all you guys have to do is just do a little bit of pre-marketing, whatever it looks like, and get a sail in the water, right? Like make this year just a little bit different than what you've done in years previous. Um, but yeah, that's what I got. You're welcome, Nancy. My pleasure. I want to see you guys win. And it's, again, the barrier to entry is so small. Like, you know, I'm not saying you're going to have the best Q4 marketing strategy in the history of mankind. I'm just saying I want you to do something this year. Don't sit on the sidelines. There is no better time, period. This is it. Right now, Q4 is the time. There's never been a better time. Um, and, it, and it happens year after year after year. So, you know, don't, don't get intimidated about whatever the size, scope, and technical specifications of your operation really looks like. All I'm asking you to do is do something. Okay. If you live on a busy thoroughfare, okay, and you have the ability to put all of your artwork on your driveway and get some balloons or maybe like one of those little artsy, you know, things they put in front of car dealerships, do that. Do that. But do not let the busiest art selling time of the year come and go without you taking a shot. Okay. Take a shot. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say as a final. Yeah. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. Um, 
But what else, guys? Questions? Comments? Concerns? And as stated, yeah, uh, there, Aaron said in the chat there, all email, everything, everything that I went through, I've got a bunch of this, that's, and the others. Actually, Aaron, too, if you, well, yeah, we'll just figure it out. I'll get you the links. Um, but it, it's helpful to have them all under, underneath the video if you, you know, if you can embed the video after the fact, but we can talk about that. But all right, do we leave it there? That's great, Patrick. Thank you so much for all that information. For, for me, I'm not a fine artist, but I'm a, a consumer. And you know how many times I've gone somewhere and nobody's asked for my email. So I can't, I ask for, do you have a card? Um, and I, there's never that back and forth communication. So I can't, it's yeah. hard if I lose that card, there's no way for me besides, oh, do you remember that painting that I saw it? I can't remember the gallery that it was, or I can't remember the art show that it was. And then uh, it's over yeah. that, that it ends and that sale is gone. But if I was getting emails saying, hey, we value you as a, a customer here, we're showing you this work ahead of everybody, this new show that we're having, and you can take 10% off. And like you said, for the next 48 hours, yep. my butt would be getting my credit card and making that online order. 100%. So like I said, as a consumer, everybody listening, take Patrick's advice, do something, get those emails and communicate with those people that already have purchased from you or that may purchase from you. So Patrick, thank you so much. I want to say one more thing. If anybody has questions, we'll give you one more chance to ask Patrick because he is a wealth of knowledge. We'll give it a few seconds. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Patrick, so much. Thank you, attendees, for showing up. Um, please check out artsformc.org website for other business works programs and for more information about Arts for MC programs in general. Thank you for joining us today. And Patrick, thank you. It yeah. was wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.